So it's been three years since I broke unceremoniously my BMW, and I have been pretty bad at actually working on my car. It's a, there's a lot to do. There's a lot of work building a car from the ground up. And I got to thinking as I was editing that video, one that you were just watching, about how I was talking about you don't need to build a car from the ground up. You don't need to have a special built rally cross car. You can do it with any old piece of junk. Welcome to my piece of junk. <laughs> I am on the way home from buying a god awfully cheap 1994 Toyota Corolla automatic wagon. Yeah. So, this car is all kinds of special. The fan is hooked up straight to the battery. There's no rear view mirror up in the center here. The side view mirrors look like disco balls. They're shattered. And, um, every time I do this, well, the people behind me don't have to worry about mosquitoes. And I'm going to take this car, as it sits right now, minus a couple of, you know, things to pass tech inspection, and I'm going to rally cross it. And we're going to see how that does. And I'm going to check back with you once I do that. All right, everybody, what's up? Future David here. Um, so, I have owned this car for about two months, and it has done what I set out to do with it. That is, uh, my intention was to buy a cheap car, cheap being relative at this moment, and show you that you don't need to build a ridiculous motor-swapped BMW rallycross car to come out and have fun. And I've done that. Um, this car has been through its first rallycross. It did actually quite well. Uh, I entered it into modified front-wheel drive class, and of course it's starting to rain right as I start recording this. Um, I entered it into modified front-wheel drive class, and I got third place out of like eight people. And this is not a modified front-wheel drive car. This is a stock front-wheel drive car. Um, I entered it in a mod front just because that's where the person, my friend that I was competing with in the other Corolla, is entered in mod front. So we were going tit for tat. Uh, I did not beat him by a long shot. He wiped the floor with me. So I bought the car for $1,000. This is not a $1,000 car. Again, by a long shot. However, um, I am doing this in the beginning of 2021. Used car prices right now are ridiculous. And, you know, this, this $500, $400 car cost me $1,000. Um, I had to do some tinkering with it. I had a really fun time trying to find a, uh, an electrical gremlin that wound up being so... The guy who owned this car before the guy who owned the car before me that I bought it from, yada yada yada. He... I'm getting rained on. So. He rear-ended somebody, quite obviously. He broke the headlight mounts. Headlight mounts being plastic on this car. And... He put it back together with drywall screws. I cannot make this up. So much of this car is held together with drywall screws. It is unreal. I have found them in places that they have no business being. The headlights were held on with drywall screws. The front uh, grill was held on with drywall screws. God, I hope you can hear this over the rain. 
the interior panels were held on with drywall screws, the freaking everything was drywall screws. I have nicknamed this car Screwball for that exact reason, but moving on. Um, I went through the entire car, there was a dead short in one of the wires that was just causing a whole ton of havoc. Uh, it wound up being a dead short through a lot of wires because one of those drywall screws went right through the core support, right to a bundle of wires about this big around, a big major wiring harness, um, and that drywall screw went just straight through a number of wires, shorting them together and shorting them to ground. Um, once I got that sorted out and I, you know, fixed the wires, all of the electrical gremlins in this car disappeared. It was the most satisfying troubleshooting session I think I have ever been through. In working around that issue, the previous owner had... <laughs> had done some custom wiring to the headlights, to the radiator fan, to the bringing everything forward of the firewall in this car. Um, and so that took a little bit of creative electrical uh, creative electrical work on my part. I would never do this in a real car. Like, obviously this is a real car. But I would never do this in a car that I care about. But just for the sake of being funny, I put in this switch panel for the headlights, the fan, and the eventual uh, light bars. My purpose with this car was to buy a cheap car, put it out on the rallycross course, and show you that you, 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 can rallycross for cheap. You don't even need to buy a car for it. If you, you can bring your daily driver out, but if you're not comfortable with that, you can buy a cheap car like this one and you can throw it out on a rallycross course. And that happened. Um, so I bought the car, $1,000. Um, I put a set of struts on it. I put a set of brakes on it. I put tie rods, ball joints, it, just basic stuff. Now, I will put a list on screen of, I'm gonna do it right here, of the stuff that I bought for this car. Um, just general maintenance items. And I am going to, over here, put a list of the same items for the BMW. Like, how much that would, like, did or would cost me. And look at this list for just a second. It is mind-boggling how cheap a cheap car can be. If I had to do this, like, if I had bought my E30, and had to do all of this, which I did most of it anyway, but, like, it would be really daunting to do this, right? But it's not as daunting to do this. I had a great time. I went out, I rallycrossed for the first time in three years, because that's how long it's been since I stuffed the E30. And, ah, oh, fresh air. Rain's finally calming down. Um, yeah. It was, it was great. It, look at the, this was a month ago. Look at the smile on my face. That's how much fun I have doing this. All due thanks and praise and, like, everything to my girlfriend, now fiancé. Um, she not only supports me and tolerates me doing this, I have to drive the Rallycross equipment trailer down to... It's about a hundred and I think it's a hundred and sixty mile drive uh, down to our venue where we go. That means that I cannot trailer this car. So she drove this car a hundred and sixty well three hundred and twenty round trip miles from here to our venue and back with no air conditioning because all right listen. When a, when the guy selling you a cheap car says, Oh, it just needs an air conditioner belt. It does not just need an air conditioner belt. It probably needs the whole freaking thing overhauled, which it did. And I did not include that in the cost, uh, which is not on screen anymore, so I don't know why I'm pointing at it. All, all praise to her for driving it 
320 miles round trip, no air conditioning. And then we get back, we take it out for a 10 mile grocery run and the transmission dies. We are driving down the road and it just loses all gears, all forward gears. It won't go into reverse. It's just like I popped it into neutral transmission is done. Um, so the car did not necessarily prove the point that you can buy a cheap car and rally cross the crap out of it. Um, in theory, it's possible because we have an entire field of people out there doing that exact same thing. We have people out there who have put the Corolla that I'm up against, um, Brit Southpaw customs, amazing YouTube channel, by the way, when he uploads videos, pot kettle he probably has a few hundred dollars into his car like in terms of cost like he's way ahead way ahead in cost and talent and um yeah mechanical mechanic abilities but we're not gonna go there brit again fantastic guy we're going to go and we're going to swap the transmission out of this. He says he can do it in about four hours, which I 100% believe. Again, the guy's a wizard. Transmission. Junkyard transmission. For this car. $150. That's less than it would cost me to put, like, an alternator or some minor part on the BMW. It is, like... When the transmission died, I'm sitting here going, like, dollar signs just flashing in front of my eyes. Like, do I... I was in the middle of a sunk cost fallacy because I have put so much money into this car. And I've grown kind of attached to this car. I like it. Do I put, you know... In my mind, I was thinking, like, five, six, eight hundred dollars into this car. I hop online. $150. One junkyard has like four of them available. If I had it to do over again, I am... In terms of Rallycross, I have as much fun in this car as I have in the BMW. In fact, probably more because I'm not frustrated at the, the performance level or, in my case, probably the driver talent that I'm not getting out of it after putting all of this work into it. I have thrown a few hours of work into this car and a couple bucks, and I'm having a blast. I'm still going to finish the BMW because that is it's what I want. Like, that is the car that I want. I want to build it from scratch and engineer this thing to be a monster, but it's still kind of fun to take a, a 94 Corolla, throw it around a rallycross course, and end up with big ol' smiles. So, all that is a, like, 14-minute way of explaining that you can go out and rally cross. Please, you can go out and autocross. Please, if you are thinking, if you are even, like, curious about auto racing and getting out there and having fun, find a grassroots motorsports organization in your area, find a rally cross, find an autocross, find, you know, anything that you have, and give it a go. Most places, you just, you show up, you pass tech inspection, make sure your car is safe, and you drive. It is a blast. Anyhow, that is the video that I have for you today. Um, I know, it's been a while. It's been good to see you. Eventually, maybe, at some point, I will uh, do a video explaining why I actually haven't been releasing videos and where I've been. But, anyhow, until the next one, See you around.